Hey, I wanted to do a video on uh, radio frequency dissipation. So I've been educating myself, and this is good. It's um because there's a lot of crossovers to technology I'm used to seeing, but not necessarily within the scope of my professional career. Um, so I'm kind of learning a lot about circuit boards and components. Um, a path I've been down before well, with some hobbies I've done, but um, it's, it's good, it's a good refresher. So what this is gonna be a quick video on is ferrite beads, uh, radio frequency dissipation, uh, via the wires as opposed to the frame of the bicycle or frame of the heatsink. So up until now I've been worried about basically like a sympathetic frequency being induced in the frame of the bike with a copper coil on the heatsink, right? So I, I installed uh, dummy loads to decrease the frequency of the ground which is the frame of the bike and I saw an increase in my top speed let's say that's what I observed whether it's you know confirmed by independent tests or me testing the same thing twice as independent as that could be so be it um, it's what I've observed thus far on the first test and then changed the conditions, saw that go away and then changed it back, saw it come back, even with a lower battery. So unless my bike is riding faster um, on the 10th mile of the day than it is on the first mile of the day, uh, I'm, I'm riding faster without the shielding and with uh, RF dissipation on my heat sink. So anyway, the next step to basically managing radio frequencies in my system is ferrite beads on the wires. So, and I've, I've done this in my house, um, but I've the the mechanism um, was different. So what's going on in my house electrically is high and low pass filters on my electrical uh, wires. So basically what that is is a small diode and a small resistor. Um, one being in this order, the other one being in this order. And the difference is the high high pass versus the low pass. So it basically takes out of my 60 hertz, 120 volt uh, electrical frequency, um, high frequencies and low frequencies that aren't useful to um, power my devices. Uh, their noise and this is something and it, if you had the ability to listen to frequency the way that musicians listen to frequencies coming out of their speakers um, except you were listening to your own um, your electrical outlet uh, you would see uh, a squealing noise being taken out of the out of the symphony and uh, a humming noise being taken out of the frequency. The, these noises aren't powering my lights. Um, they're not powering my computer and they are potentially damaging um, components or my health, my psychological health. Um, and some might argue me worrying about it is more, more troubling to my health um, than uh, actually mitigating that uh, radiation exposure. In other words, I'm crazier for worrying about it than the stress would cause me damage. Uh, 
or the stress from worrying about it is worse than the stress uh, from the actual radiation exposure. That's you know every that's natural selection. Uh, you know, some people choose to worry about it. Some people choose not to worry about it, and we'll find out in twenty to fifty years whether or not it's biologically impactful um, or psychologically impactful. Uh, is irrelevant because we know it's impactful to sound systems um, and potentially uh, sensitive electronics. So that's why it's typically done, high and low pass filtering, uh, is to protect sensitive components um, and to improve the quality of sound systems, right? So up until now, I've been worried about generating a secondary current in that coil. And that's cool, I, I, I'm right. But what I've seen in the field, and this is new, this is if you went back five years even, and you saw uh, ECM motors specific, I'm thinking of like high end uh, variable frequency drive systems, uh, they didn't have these five years ago, or, or you know, even, um, I don't know, I, I probably started seeing them about three years ago on the really, really expensive stuff, and that's ferrite beads. So, and so I'm basically reading up on them, and they function like high and low pass filters for DC systems. So a DC system, we can't put a capacitor on it, right? We can't uh, use capacitors on DC systems. So what these do is basically the same thing, except no contact. Uh, and they take the high and low frequencies that are either generated by the motor that you're turning or they are uh, generated uh, externally and being picked up by your wires or by your system um, including your round uh, as as if it was an antenna so you can and then the the primary is going to be the frequencies that we're generating. So depending on the size of the bead that you're using, the number of passes, there's there's actually quite a bit of science that goes into it. And selecting the wrong bead, or, and this is similar with capacitors, um, selecting the wrong bead or installing it incorrectly, uh, too many passes, uh, too few passes, for your system can cause more harm than good but installing it correctly uh, within the right frequency range uh, apparently is a very similar thing to a high and low pass filter and just like the dummy loads um, they convert basically these high and low frequencies uh, into thermal energy and dissipate that harmlessly without uh, causing damage to the system. So this is the next step. This is what's going on the bike, hopefully tomorrow. And we'll see um, if there's any further improvement. But what I will say is these are components that I'm seeing on DC driven uh, ECM motors that are uh, are very expensive. I don't see them on my bike and I am I'm going to attempt maybe by trial and error maybe by I, I ordered a kit so I'll have access to lots of different sizes. So far what I found is that the the best for a high pass filter is to take all three of your motor windings and to wind them uh, twice at 
30 degree angle spacings from each other on the same ring. So one ring and you got one of your motor windings going two loops here, another motor winding two loops there, another motor winding two loops there. So 30 degrees apart and all on the same ring. That's the best, what I've found so far, for a high pass filter. And for a low pass filter, a single ring clip on, one per winding. And that's what I'm gonna start with. And um, I'm pretty sure that the location is they're gonna, it's gonna be recommended closest to the motor, which isn't gonna happen because that's, uh, everything is um, encased together at that at that point uh, and I'm not going to open up the hub but I'm going to uh, I'm going to do some more research and find out about locations and and all that but yeah ferrite rings that's the that's the next add on to the bike see if I can improve the uh, durability of these electrical components for the long term